Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to the panel Acceptance and Rights of Minorities in the Western Balkans. Dobar den, dobar dan, diten emire, guten tag. My name is Andre Uhidi. I'm a German professor for education sciences at the University of Education, born in Hungary. One of my major research topics has been and still is the educational situation of Roma in Hungary and in the European Union. Specifically, I have been looking into the conditions for educational success for Roma women, which are often regarded as a minority within a minority. I will be your moderator today. First, I'd like to give you a short introduction to our speakers. Then I will give you some information about the content and the timing of our panel. Mrs. Emilia Regepi is third deputy prime minister of Kosovo for minority issues and human rights. She studied at the Faculty of Education in Pristina and earned her master's degree at the International University of Novi Pazar in the field of political sciences and international relations. From 2001 to 2008, she was a major activist in the non-governmental sector and director of the NGO Equality. After that, she was elected president of the New Democratic Party and a member of the prison municipal assembly for the Bosnia community. In 2010, she was deputy minister for energy. In the same year, she became member of the Kosovo parliament for the Bosnia community. In 2020, she was appointed minister of local government administration and became director for culture, youth and sports at the municipality of prison. Since 2011, she has been an active member of the OSCE a dialogue for normalization of relations between Kosovo and Serbia. A very warm welcome. Mrs. Sonja Licht is founder and president of the Belgrade Fund of Political Excellence. From 1991 to 2003, she was the head of the Soros Foundation, Yugoslavia and Serbia. She studied at the University of Belgrade Sociology and earned her master's degree in social cultural anthropology. She was a part of the Yugoslav dissident movement during the communist regime, funded numerous local and international NGOs, and was among the founders of the International Helsinki Citizens Assembly. For her work as a civic activist, she has been awarded with several international peace and human rights prizes, like the Star of Italian Solidarity, the French Legion of Honor, and the Order of Merit of the Federal Republic of Germany. She is the chair of the Roma Advisory Board of the Open Society Foundation and a member of the European Council of Foreign Relations. Very welcome. Mr. Suat Skenderi is a program manager for foreign and national politics at the Institute for Research and Policy Analysis, Roma Litico. He studied political science, international relations, and journalism at the Fon University in Skopje and earned his master degree in political science, specializing in research methodology at the Central European University in Budapest. He worked for the humanitarian Roma Association Meshechina and was fellow at Think Young in Brussels and Roma Integration 2020 before funding Roma Litico. He facilitated the working group on our panel topic during the first forum civil society and think tank forum one road to Berlin. A very warm welcome. And last but not least, Dr. Frederik Jorgens is the deputy head of the Western Balkans Division of the German Foreign Office in Berlin. He studied political and social sciences in the UK and in Italy. In 2009, he joined the German Foreign Office and worked in Shanghai, Afghanistan, and in Tel Aviv before coming to Berlin. He has a German French family background. Very nice to meet you. Thank you very much for coming and participating in this panel. I'm very happy and very honored to be your moderator today. And thank you very much for Tina, Victoria and Florian uh, who take care of all of the technical aspects of our panel. And Hans Georg, a very special thank to you for organizing all this uh, session. The goal of this panel is to discuss the topic acceptance and social inclusion of minorities in the Western Balkans region, especially of the Roma minority, based on the results of the policy recommendations developed by civil society uh, experts 
experts, I'm sorry, in the first think tank forum in June. We will begin with a short input by Mr. Skenderi, who facilitated a working group on this topic during the first forum. He will present the recommendations. After his input, or other panelists will have the chance to comment on these findings. I have prepared some questions to each of them, but I'd also like to ask our audience to ask questions or make comments. You can submit your question in writing in the chat or by raising your hand. I will have the task to keep an eye on the time and also to finish our panel on time after exact 60 minutes. I have this uh, watch for that. Now I'd like to ask Mr. Skenderi to give us a short summary about the results and recommendations of the working group from the first forum to our topic. The stage is yours. Uh, first of all, very thank you for the warm welcome. I'd like to uh, express my gratitude to uh, all of the participants of this uh, forum. Uh, as you already introduced me, I'm Sulat Skenderi. I was part of the uh, first civil society forum and, and big thanks. And uh, I must admit that it has been a very fruitful discussion, which generated a lot of uh, policy recommendations towards the CSOs, towards the uh, national governments, as well as to the European Union as well. So I'd like to jump on the recommendations so that I don't uh, take up uh, much of the time. So I, first of all, I'd like to um, uh, introduce the recommendations towards the CSOs and the think tanks uh, from the Western Balkans. So first of all is the mobilization and engagement of minorities to participate in times of elections. Work on holding accountable institutions which are responsible for implementation of the Poznan Declaration and the EU strategic framework. Uh, ensure internet access to all of the Roma uh, settlements in the Western Balkans through the digital agenda funds. Educate the Roma community about e-services, since governments are working uh, on a common project for the provision of the online services. And uh, support the mentorship of uh, Roma students by the Roma graduates in order to overcome the COVID-19 crisis. As for the uh, recommendations towards the Western Balkan governments, uh, there are a lot, but I'll try to squeeze them all in. So first is to safeguard the freedom of political expression in the Western Balkans, especially for minorities due to their isolation and the existing uh, tokenism. Tailor employment measures and voca vocational trainings for minorities in accordance with the market demands in order to maximize the potential of the workforce. Support Roma's informal gray economy to transit towards a green economy together with the economic actors make an objective of the digital agenda to involve Roma children in the digital education and ensure their access to digital and online continuous education. Monitor and sanction discrimination by the health, institution and health institutions and staff towards the Roma patients when they go for checkups or other, other health services. Uh, take a targeted field approach towards minorities for immunization slash vaccination in order to tackle the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, establish instruments to allow vulnerable groups to access EU funds and ensure that minorities participate in the planning process. Collect data for the purposes of the Poznan Declaration, as well as the number of uh, Roma vaccinated against COVID-19. Use the potential and the capacities and the expertise from the business sector and the CSOs utilize the opportunities to take advantage of the Western Balkans investment framework in order to improve the situation of Roma, especially through the, uh, through the construction of uh, social housing. Guarantee the organization of an uh, unbiased census and the participation of Roma throughout this process. Ensure civil registration by, uh, for minorities by 2024 in accordance with the UNHCR pledges and the Poznan Declaration. Safeguard the infrastructure in the Roma settlements, uh, such as access to electricity and water supply, and engaging minorities in the reforestation process in order to mitigate climate change's consequences and negative impact on the environment. As for the EU and the member states' uh, recommendations, 
Uh, I have few. So the first one is invest efforts in political assistance in the Western Balkans, especially to minority participation in decision making positions and processes as allies to the minorities. Monitor the implementation of the national laws in the Western Balkans, especially the laws covering the promotion of the rights of the minorities. Uh, monitor anti-gypsism and make sure that no one is left behind despite some progress resulting from the EU efforts. Initiate the operationalization of the Poznan Declaration and monitor the progress towards meeting the objectives. And the last one is include Roma to participate in the accession and the negotiation process when Western Balkan countries open the accession negotiations. So these were the recommendations generated from the from the first uh, civil society and think tank forum, well, the first part. And uh, I'd like to stop here so that the others can um, open a discussion about these recommendations. Thank you very much. I think you're muted. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Skandari, uh, for uh, your uh, report about these uh, fundings and recommendations. And can I ask you, Mrs. Licht, uh, to tell us what do you think about these recommendations? First of all, I want to greet everybody and to thank uh, the organizers for being invited again for the second round of the Civil Society and Think Tank Forum. Um, I agree with Suad, we had a very, very good um, working group and very engaged. Although I was listening to these recommendations, which I more or less know by heart, I must say that we, uh, uh, I was thinking how we in fact live in an incredibly complex and dynamic times. Because I must say, only a month after these recommendations were written, there are certain things that I think would uh, look differently. What do I mean? Well, um, there was a very dramatic event that happened between these two rounds. And it's true, it did not happen in the Western Balkans, but in the Czech Republic. Sla Stanislav Tomas, uh, uh, mid young mid-age Roma was killed exactly in the same way as George Floyd in the States on June 19th. Uh, and then it was announced by the police, but even by, by the highest political authorities that he died from an overdose. He might die from an overdose, but he was killed by a policeman. And he was killed because the policeman was kneeling on his back, on his neck for six minutes. So why did I start with this very sad story? Of course, it is not a unique story. We, I could go on with telling other stories that happened in our part of the world. But I am convinced that a new time has come. And as far as I understand, for the first time, uh, we can see a more or less organized response of the Roma community throughout our region as well. And the slogan is Roma Lives Matter. I think this is where this whole event, very tragic event, has, a, a, I believe it will be a cornerstone. And the cornerstone is able to happen exactly because of all the changes that we went through in the last few decades. I am not going into history. I would just say that it is now 16 years since the Roma decade, a decade on Roma inclusion started. We know that certain steps were achieved, especially uh, understanding the com complex and, and, and really demanding issue of education, housing, employment, but I think that where we are today is in fact such a crossroad because on the one hand, you have the Roma community still, and that was very clear during the COVID, especially the beginning of the COVID without running water, without basic, basic facilities to live a, a very, very poor life, even without pandemic. 
in the pandemic, uh, the, the very existence, the very life uh, of these people. Uh, and there are quite a few approximately in Serbia only up to 25,000 in this situation. I'm sure there is even more. And um, so they are living in settlements without any conditions that fit such a crisis situation. Plus, of course, the children, most of very many children were not able to follow the digital education, the online education. This is where the whole digital story comes in, in a big way. Uh, the families didn't have the conditions for something like that. And we will have, we already have, and will have a larger dropout rate than for many, many years back. Exactly because of all the recommendations we have, the Poznan Declaration, which has to be, and I hope it will be reiterated this year as well from the uh, participants of the summit as a very important document that has to be followed. I would like to, in fact, put the emphasis on um, the issue of emancipation at the Roma community as a whole is now facing a major challenge of political, economic, educational, cultural emancipation. I dare to call, uh, dare to uh, uh, use this maybe old fashioned term, but I think it still works. It is absolutely necessary for the whole society, societies, and um, both in each and every part of Western Balkans, but also regionally to work together and really to uh, do their best uh, if they care for European values that we hear every time when there is a discussion as this one, for example, today that Euro EU is a community of values and we want to join that community of values, then we must together and not only the Roma work for those values to become a reality. In the same time, I would say it is very important for civil society organization, think tanks, not only Roma organizations, but all of us to work toward, in fact, approving to the society, not only that Roma are part and parcel of our society, but they, they, can, they can and they are ready to contribute to these societies who are also facing a lot of difficulties. So this is where I find the, uh, uh, the uh, transition from gray to green economy is so important. We all have to transition from gray to green economies. We all have to work on for reforestation. Roma can add a lot on mitigating climate change with, with what they are doing in daily life, et cetera, et cetera. So I think the message has to be very clear. Roma are working for their own uh, benefit, but they are in the same time benefiting and have a huge potential benefit our societies, especially our aging societies that are all faced with their population. And we have here a young and potentially really, really energetic population that can in fact help not only themselves, but all of us. Thank you for your attention. Mrs. Lee, thank you very much uh, for your comment. And as you can see, uh, unfortunately, we have lost uh, Deputy Prime Minister, Mrs. Rejepi, but uh, I hope she will be able to come back. <laughs> we, maybe we'll see. Um, Mr. Jorgens, can I ask you to comment on the recommendation of the first, uh, of the working group of the first uh, think tank event? Yes, hello, dear Professor Ohidi, dear, um, well, Deputy Prime Minister, if, if uh, you are listening, uh, Ms. Licht, uh, Mr. Skenderi, participants, colleagues, friends, uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me here in the forum. I'm participating as a, as a diplomat who has been working in the preparations of um, the whole Berlin process this year, but uh, not so much as an expert. Um, so I am, for many things, of course, more listening on the receiving end. Um, of uh, what you have been saying. I also uh, listened to many parts of the first part of the, of the forum. Um, and uh, perhaps I would just say a few sentences to um, the fact that the civil society forum is a crucial part of the Berlin process. And we take very seriously the bottom-up approach um, that these discussions feed into the political discussions 
uh, that we are having, um, uh, the recommendations and everything you discussed there is duly taken note of. Um, and I think this is a very important part um, of uh, the entire process. The Berlin process, um, of course, helps us to put the Western Balkans high on the European agenda and to re remind uh, everyone um, in, in Europe um, and, uh, and in the Western Balkans that it is high on our agendas. Um, but we equally push for real advances in the region through regional cooperation. And this is uh, what we hope um, uh, also after the summit um, that is starting, that just started today, um, at the same time as we speak um, with, uh, with the heads of uh, governments and states, um, we hope that um, this type of cooperation continues uh, throughout at the political level, but also, of course, on the civil society level. Um, and in terms of this working group, I really um, am grateful to the organizers um, uh, for having um, created this um, important topic as, a, as one working group because um, it is very crucial that we look at minorities and uh, Roma as being the, uh, uh, the largest majority in a uh, minority, <laughs> but in, uh, in Europe, um, I think it's really important that we talk um, about um, the status um, of um, inclusion and marginalization. Um, I can only confirm uh, what uh, uh, Ms. Licht has also said. Um, uh, I think the recommendation, recommendations and assessments were extremely useful um, from uh, what uh, we've also seen in the documents and what you have um, briefly presented and summed up now. Um, and uh, uh, we, uh, I also think that it's, um, it's good that the recommendations are so specific because they really bring elements of what civil society should do, what the EU can do, what the countries in the region can do, even what political parties um, can do to, um, to work for better inclusion. Um, of Roma in um, uh, countries. Um, so um, I, um, uh, I can repeat that um, what is important is that we overcome discrimination, discrimination and marginalization and even violence as Ms. Licht reminded us with this uh, very sad case uh, in, in the past weeks. Um, and we need to fight together, and this is for the governments as well as for civil society, for an open and pluralistic society um, in the Western Balkans, but of course in the whole of Europe. Minorities have a place and are part of the mainstream society, so this should be our aim. Um, I would just like to um, sum up as well what, what uh, we have achieved. And if I say we, I mean it in the broad sense in the past years. And we, we have achieved quite a few things. Um, so there is the Poznan, Poznan Declaration, as was mentioned, 2019. There is the new EU Roma strategy uh, that we um, have since last year with tangible goals until 2030. Um, there is um, a definition of anti-Gypsism, which uh, we reached Last year, um, there is concrete projects that we pushed for and uh, implemented um, on different levels. Um, there was a ministerial meeting on Roma last week, um, uh, again, uh, which continues the work also with the Regional Cooperation Council. So we have many tools that are in place and that, that advance, and uh, I think many important steps have been made. But, and this is where I would confirm many, many of the things that you have said, uh, the situation is still far from satisfactory in terms of inclusion, in terms of conditions and perspective for especially also for young Roma in the region. Uh, also the presented data that, uh, that you had in your analysis from the, from the working group shows that a lot of work still lies ahead. Unemployment is still nearly twice as high for Roma. Education levels have not been reached. Health insurance cover is not sufficient. Um, there are shortcomings both in implementation of these measures um, but also in social discrimination, um, which uh, we have not overcome. And COVID-19, as you also mentioned, has thing, made things far worse um, because the most marginalized society, the communities are the ones that were hit most. And this particularly applied um, to Roma um, in the region, um, both in terms of uh, what you said, uh, education and uh, access, um, but also just in terms of the health risk and, uh, and uh, rates of infection. And this is where in the next step, it is so important um, that the access to vaccines um, is, um, 
uh, is made possible um, uh, for uh, Roma communities in particular. Um, I would just like to, to give one um, other dimension uh, which uh, was just briefly touched upon as well, which is the one on, on migration. Um, and we, we had um, a large conference last year in October um, under the EU presidency um, uh, um, when Germany had the, the um, council presidency, uh, where we looked at the question of migration of uh, young people away from the Western Balkans. And this is particularly true for, for many young Roma from the region who see their future elsewhere. Um, because they do not see perspectives in the countries where they live. And this is really, I think, the crucial point where we need to try to change things uh, that young people there get perspectives. And this, in turn, will be a perspective to have a very dynamic part of the society participate, be integrated, and um, become part of um, the mainstream of society. Um, so last but not least, I think it is important that we work on these things together across um, across borders. It's also important, and I think this is, um, for me, such a positive uh, outcome of the Civil Society Forum this year, but of course also in the last years, that there is this great cooperation of civil society group across uh, countries to work on issues that are relevant, not, uh, not in individual countries, but across the region and across um, Europe. Um, and of course, the aim is to create plural and open societies, which is also part of another working group, which we, uh, which uh, there was on reconciliation. Um, uh, there must be a true place um, for all in, in society, and this um, should be our joint um, uh, aim. So um, thank you very much. And of course, um, we'll have questions in the discussion. Thank you very much, Mr. Jorgens. And welcome back, uh, Deputy Prime Minister. This time, Mr. Strejapi, <laughs> it's nice that you be uh, able to come back. Can I ask you to make your comment, please? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Because I have uh, technical uh, mistakes from the start. Uh, but I hear you, everybody. Uh, and uh, I will try, maybe uh, I talk my interpreter with me because uh, my English is not so good. And uh, maybe she will uh, uh, translate my speech. It's okay for you? Yeah. Pre svega želim da vas pozdravim, da vam se zahvalim na pozivu. First of all, I would like to thank you for the uh, invitation and to salute you. Da pozdravim Andreju, Suada, Sonju. To salute Andre and Sonja. Sonju nisam videla dugo vremena. Sonja, I haven't seen a while. Uh, pozdravljam vas iz Prištine, sa Kosova. Uh, na funkciji sam zamenika premijera za manjinska pitanja i za ljudska prava. I'm saluting you from Pristina, Kosovo. Now I'm in charge of as a deputy prime minister for human rights. I drago mi je što sam deo ovog foruma koji je organizovan od strane civilnog društva jer sam dugi niz godina bila u civilnom sektoru. And I'm glad that I am part of this uh, civil society forum uh, as I have been uh, for many years involved in the civil society issues. Imam veliko iskustvo o, po pitanju predstavljanja i zaštite manjinskih prava u kosovskom društvu. I have a big experience uh, regarding the uh, uh, Protect. protection of uh, human rights in uh, Kosovo society and minority, and minority rights. Uh, I smatram da mogu dati svoj doprinos u ovoj sferi. And I believe I can give uh, a lot to this uh, sphere. S obzirom da smo nova vlada koja ima samo 100 dana, uh, taking in consideration that we are a young government, uh, only 100 days old, uh, dajemo svoj maksimum po pitanju manjinskih prava. We are giving our maximum regarding uh, the rights of human rights and minority rights. Tu smatram i položaj romske zajednice. In that I mean also the position of Roma society koja je nažalost kao i svuda u regionu na slaboj margini 
našeg civilnog društva i ne samo civilnog nego javnog društva uopšte. Which is uh, also as uh, everywhere in the world in a very low marginalized uh, level. Ali kod nas Romi ustavna kategorija. But uh, for us uh, Roms are uh, constitutional category. Imaju svoje pravo. They have their own rights. Kao i sve druge zajednice narodi na Kosovo. Uh, like all uh, other societies in Kosovo. Fokusirani smo kao vlada na socioekonomski status svih građana. Uh, as a government we are focused on all the social uh, and economical status for all the citizens. Moj prioritet biće uh, praćenje zakona o zaposlenosti manjinskih zajednica u javnim institucijama i preduzećima. My priority will be uh, foc- will, will be focused on employment of uh, all the uh, all the minorities in uh, central and local government. Takođe biće uh, upotreba jezika u administraciji. As well it will be the usage of the language in the administration. Uh, za romsku zajednicu naša strategija će biti fokusirana na edukaciji. Uh, as for the Romans, uh, our strategy will be focused on the education, na infrastrukturi, infrastructure. Od strane poslanika i civilnog sektora iz redova romske zajednice dobili smo strategiju koja se zasniva na pomoći u agronomiji. Uh, from uh, members of parliament, uh, we have uh, we we got strategy that is focused uh, on the agronomiji. On the agronomy, uh, kako bi se zaustavio kako bismo zaustavili migraciju romske uh, populacije so that we could stop uh, the migration from, from the roma society tamo gde žive romi u opštinama na lokalnom nivou fokusirani smo na njihovo zapošljavanje uh, where romans live we are focused on their employment uh, i dalje je prisutna rasna diskriminacija still there is uh, a lot of uh, gender uh, inequality I dalje je prisutan, prisutan fenomen anticiganizam. Uh, it is still present uh, the fenomen of anti-gypsism. Uh, moramo raditi na podizanje svesti većinske zajednice. Uh, we have to work on the to upright the level of uh, of minority rights. Uh, kako bi uh, mladi rasli u duhu uh, poštovanja i uvažavanja svih naroda, a ne sa mržnjom i sa konflikta, konfliktima i sa stereotipima jedni od drugim. So that the younger generation could uh, live and uh, with uh, respect, uh, caring for each other and not with hatred. Uh, kao vlada imamo dobar socioekonomski program. As a government, we have a very well-developed uh, social economical program. Koji je direktno fokusiran na financijska mesečno, mesečnu podršku deci. Uh, which is directly uh, focused on financial monthly uh, payment. Uh, roditeljima. To the kids, for, for the kids, to the, uh, to the parents. Samohrani majkama. Uh, mothers that are single. I starim licima. And uh, altered people. Prioriteti dalje su uh, je podrška od strane Ministarstva za rad i socijalu siromašnim ljudima. Uh, the priority is, is still for the belonging to the uh, elder people and uh, socially uh, not very stable. Uh, fokusirani smo i dalje na infrastrukturne projekte kako ne bismo imali uh, kolektivne centre za život Roma. We are focused on social uh, infrastructural projects so that we wouldn't have uh, so we wouldn't have uh, collective centers u programu vlade 273 izgradnja socijalnih kuća in the program of the government we have two, 273 uh, new build uh, new houses that will be built 60% tog projekta je već završeno 60% of that project is already finished ali naravno da imamo ovaj potrebe uh, za jačom infrastrukturom po opštinama gde žive romi uh, but still we have uh, the need for a better uh, better support from the municipalities 
Ono što nam treba od strane Evropske unije jeste podrška svim manjinskim zajednicama. What we need from the European Union is the support to all the minority societies. Jeste podrška civilnom sektoru. Support to civil sector. Jeste podrška vladinim institucijama. Support to governmental institutions. Jeste podrška interetničkom dijalogu nas svih ovde koji živimo na Kosovu. Support to interetnikal dialog to all of us who live in Kosovo. Kako bismo manje zaustavili migraciju svih građana Kosova. So that we could stop or lower the migration of Kosovo citizens. Ako kažemo i govorimo u javnosti da je Kosovo multijetničko društvo. If we say and talk about it that Kosovo is a multi-ethnic state, onda to moramo i u praksi implementirati. So we should do it in practical words. I'm here for any questions from your side. Thank you so much. Maybe a little bit later. Or uh, can I see some questions? No, no, not really. But uh, I, I have one for Mr. Skandari, because today we celebrate the second anniversary of the Poznan Declaration, in which the prime ministers of the Western Balkans reiterated their commitment for the integration of Roma in their societies and pledged to step up their efforts as part of the EU enlargement process and regional cooperation, as uh, Mrs. Rajapi uh, also said. They set objectives regarding employment, education, health, civil reg registration, and non-discrimination. Mr. Skandari, what do you think about the implementation of the objectives of the Poznan Declaration on its second anniversary, which successes can we record, which challenges remain? Uh, thank you very much for the question. Uh, I cannot say that much has been done, uh, especially because of the COVID-19 crisis that hit the most vulnerable, even to be more vulnerable. Uh, we cannot say much about employment because we've done a research and the research shows that Roma were the first to be fired from uh, companies, uh, from the business sector and the public sector um, due to the COVID-19 crisis. Because of the uh, job cuts, Roma were the first to be fired. Uh, when we talk about housing, legalization of dwellings is still, a, is still delayed because, uh, you know, Roma settlements are still not part of the detailed urbanistic plans. And uh, many of the countries are still having problems to incorporate uh, uh, dwellings of Roma into the detailed urbanistic plans. When we speak about education, internet access is still a luxury uh, for many Roma, as well as uh, distance learning as uh, it has been already noted by uh, the fellow uh, participants. Electronic devices were still, again, I say, a luxury to many of the Roma. The gap is still, get, get, it gets even bigger as before. And when we talk about healthcare, we must uh, note that not all of the Roma have uh, the chance to register for vaccination. And there has to be a targeted approach from the governments towards the uh, unremote, I say, settlements where Roma people live because they don't have internet, they don't have any electronic device, so they cannot, uh, they don't even have access to uh, health institutions, so they cannot uh, um, uh, get get a vaccine. So this is a, a huge struggle. One thing for sure that I might say that there is a slight progress is that. Uh, civil registration heads towards uh, incorporating all Roma. So uh, uh, I hope that uh, in very near future, uh, as far as uh, North Macedonia, I can say for sure that uh, more than 750 people will um, get into um, um, the, uh, the 
identification process and they will get the identification doc, uh, documents. And uh, as far as the discrimination, uh, we have had a huge setback as a region because uh, many of the mainstream media were trying to um, uh, create stories that Roma did not believe in the COVID-19 uh, uh, virus. They, they were the first ones to spread the virus. And even in the social media, it has been a total chaos where um, many of the mainstream communities were targeting Roma as in the, in the social media and were calling for dictators to come back. I must not say names, but you already know they, they were calling names of dictators to come back in reality and take care of us. So you, you can understand to which degree of hatred there is in the social media. And I'd like to thank uh, Mrs. Sonia Licht about uh, noting this very, very uh, important, I, I'd say as well, cornerstone, because you know the death of Stanislav uh, Tomas has been a, um, a critical juncture for the Roma community in Europe, because there has been a, uh, a series of, of protests in many of the countries. Uh, in Saturday, there was one in, in North Macedonia, and we were more than 1,000 people on the streets chanting for, for freedom. Although we have never seen uh, Stanislav Tomas in reality, but we feel the pain that, uh, that was in the video because it was horrifying to see and, and uh, it was horrifying to experience that someone from your own ethnicity has been uh, 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 the subject of such uh, horrifying uh, act. So uh, thank you very much. I, I'm, I hope that I answered the question, although a little bit of pessimistic, but this is the reality that we are living and uh, this is what, what we see in, in, uh, in the region. Thank you. Thank you very much. And you also had has a question from our audience. Uh, I can read it aloud. I find Suat's idea of engaging Roma into the green economy instead of the gray economy, especially interesting. Can we learn more about that concept? So actually, uh, there is a there is a whole process of of uh, transition. So first of all, we must understand that uh, Roma uh, many of the Roma are working as uh, uh, waste collectors and, and, and scrap, uh, scrap collectors. So these people are actually helping us as a society to get rid of plastic, to get rid of metal, to get rid of uh, many of the things that are uh, impacting negatively on the environment. So usually these people are not into the uh, formalized business sector. So this is not a formalized business. Yet we believe that these businesses that uh, already exist in the informal economy can be the, uh, the drivers of the change towards the transition to, to green economy because a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the people here are trying to uh, get by day by day just by collecting plastic. But when we think about ourselves as a collective, we must know that plastic can last for many years and we cannot get rid of, of the plastic if we do not recycle it. So if we recycle this, uh, these materials, I think that uh, this would be a very um, um, innovative way to transit from the informal sector, the gray economy, to green economy. This is just one example of businesses that exist as informal businesses in the countries that can transit towards the uh, uh, towards the green economy and be uh, part of the change towards the, uh, the the green agenda. Thank you so much for your answer. Um, and I'd like to ask our audience to ask your questions and uh, or make your comments uh, right now. You are muted again, I'm sorry. 
Oh, thank you very much. I'm sorry. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, our audience to ask questions or make uh, comments right now because, uh, well, we don't have um, much time left. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, this is the time. But for the time being, I have a question to Deputy Prime Minister, Mrs. Rajapi. What do you think, which have been the biggest problems and challenges to achieve the objective of the Poznan Declaration since the second ministerial meeting in Albania last year? Is it the COVID-19 pandemic or something else? Uh, yes, it's necessary that there must be a will, a political will, da se nešto što se potpiše realizuje na terenu. First of all, there should be a political will that what we what is signed should be also uh, done in the real uh, or on the field. Ukoliko ne želite da implementirate to onda nemojte da potpisujete takve sporazume koji su teški za implementaciju. Uh, if you do not want to implement those uh, or to implement those declarations that you have signed, don't sign them at the first place. Mi takođe u okviru ove uh, ovog memoranduma, ova poznata deklaracija koja je potpisana u Albaniji, takođe na terenu imamo problem oko legalizacije zemljišta. Uh, we as a part of the declara poznata declaration also have problems on the field uh, for the legalization of the land. A veliki broj pripadnika Roma nema zemljište na svoje ime. Uh, a, a big part of the Roma society don't have their, their lands on their own names. I ukoliko lokalna vlast ima mogućnosti da im sagradi kuće, a mora pronaći adekvatno zemljište od strane opštine. Uh, and if the local government want to, wants to build houses for them, they should find the appropriate uh, land at the first place. Ukoliko imaju svoje zemljište, legalizacija je teška zbog mnogih drugih indikatora sa strane. And if they have uh, the lands on their own names, uh, legalization is hard regarding other problems from the other side. U vezi civilne registracije imamo i mi tu nekih pomaka, bolje je stanje. As uh, for the civil registration, we have uh, gone a step forward. The situation is much better. Ali ja bi se generalno fokusirala na rasnu diskriminaciju. Uh, but my focus would be on uh, racial discrimination. Koja ne bi trebala da postoji u 21. veku. Uh, which shouldn't exist in the 21st century. Uh, Takođe, mi kao vlada dajemo ovaj, jaku podršku sistemu uh, ar, ovaj, obrazovanja, edukacije. We as a government give a lot of support to the educational system. I tu možemo da se pohvalimo o, ovaj, da romska zajednica ima sada adekvatnih kadrova i kapaciteta da edukuje svoju decu. Uh, thus we can say that uh, the Roma society now has a better uh, educational uh, status that, uh, and that, that can educate the Roma society. Sad dolazimo do... Uh, do drugog problema koji je jezičke barijere zato što oni govore romski jezik a njihova deca trebaju da se školuju uh, na jednom od službenih jezika ili na albanskom ili na srpskom uh, now we come we face another challenge that they are the roma society uh, speaks in roman languages and their children should be educated in another language uh, either uh, albanian or Bosnian Serbian. or Serbian. E, to je drugi problem, zabrinjavajući. This is also uh, another problem. Ali svakako uh, naš fokus biće ovaj, uh, zasnovan i dalje na pandemiji. But uh, our focus will still be uh, on the pandemija. Uh, I bit će uh, fokus na izgradnju stambenih objekata. And the focus will be on the housing. Uh, socioekonomski program dotiče svakog građanina. The social econo economical program will impact uh, all the uh, citizens, Rome, including Romans. Ali uh, nužnost i velika potreba je prostor za stanovanjem i edukacije. Uh, but the need, a big need is uh, for the land uh, owning and education. Thank you very much. 
Mrs. Licht, you have a question or a comment? Well, in fact, I do have more a comment. I wanted uh, to mention an initiative, which I think is uh, spreading throughout the region uh, and very important. And this is the Roma Entrepreneurship Initiative. Uh, as far as I know, in Northern Macedonia and Serbia, uh, the government also stepped in with their support, also the Austrian cooperation, uh, um, uh, International Austrian Cooperation uh, supported um, an entrepreneurship fund uh, in Macedonia, uh, as well as the uh, Council of Europe's bank. So I think, and uh, uh, it started already also in Serbia to prepare for, uh, prepare for um, loans uh, that will uh, in fact enhance the economic potential of the uh, Roma community through entrepreneurship. I would also like to mention that I think it is very, very important in um, implementing, I fully agree with Amelia, if they sign something, they need, to, they need to start doing it. So I think it is very important that the support for economic empowerment and cultural empowerment, educational empowerment uh, should uh, in fact be supported in cooperation also with the Rome, uh, with the regional initiatives throughout, throughout the region. But I also uh, have another recommendation, which uh, um, I think would be very important to the, the European Union. Um, there was a promise that there will be an envoy for anti-gypsism at the level of the uh, European Commission. There is one on anti-Semitism. So I'm turning also to Mr. Jurgens uh, and asking him, please be so kind, support, and uh, try to push for that initiative because I think it would be a very important message for the entire European Union and of course for the aspiring countries uh, to uh, get much more active in, in fighting anti-gypsism. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, Mr. Jorgens, maybe you can uh, make a short comment because our time is very short. Uh, what can the European Union do to help the Roma minority and other minorities to get more acceptance and rights in the Western Balkans region? Well, thank you. I think the EU is, is doing a lot, of course. We, we did talk about the EU um, uh, agenda on, uh, uh, on Roma, and um, uh, I also am very happy to, to take up uh, what you said, Ms. Licht, and of course, we, uh, you know, we, we have put also a lot of um, uh, energy into the question of uh, the definition of anti-Gypsism last year, and this is, of course, something that we, we follow up on, so I will take this, this up. Uh, thank you very much, and I'd also like to, to underline um, uh, what um, uh, uh, Deputy uh, Prime Minister um, Recepi just said, which I think is is uh, really important, that uh, there is no space for for racism in the 21st century. And uh, this morning we had um, uh, also the session of the Youth Forum, um, where um, it is promising to see when when you have the young people from the region talking, they do want an open society, um, an open pluralistic, inclusive society, and this is what what gives the perspective. Uh, also to, to have the future in their countries. Um, uh, so I think this is really what we should, uh, what we should be working on and, and hope um, uh, to, to keep the people, uh, the young people working on that. Thank you very much. And uh, well, unfortunately, <laughs> we have not much time, but I really like to thank you very much for all of you for this very interesting discussion, which I hope will help to make things better, not only for Roma inclusion, but for all minorities. There is still a long way to go to achieve their social integration, even in the European Union. But therefore, I think we must take all necessary steps to come even closer to their social integration in the Western Balkans and other parts of Europe. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for all for joining.